In this video, we're going to calculate delta T for compounds that are contained in TD symmetry using tanabe sagano diagrams. Before we do that, we're going to look at D1 versus D9 ions. So for our D1 ion, we have our five degenerate D orbitals. And in OH symmetry, these will split into EG and lower energy T2G orbitals with an electron occupying those lower energy T2G orbitals. In TD symmetry, these split into E orbitals and T2 orbitals with an electron occupying those lower energy E orbitals. For our D9 species, once again, in the free ion, we have the five-fold degenerate D orbitals. These split in OH symmetry. your EG and your T2G with a hole in your EG set and in TD symmetry to your T2 and your E orbital Now you have a hole in your T2 orbitals. The free ion for both the D1 and the D9 are signified by doublet D terms. So it's a doublet D for both the D1 and the D9. For the D1 ion, as you increase the octahedral field, this doublet D term splits into a doublet T2G and a doublet EG term, with the doublet T2G term being lower than your doublet EG term. As you increase the tetrahedral field strength, delta T, that doublet D term also splits, but now the doublet E term is lower in energy than the doublet T2 term. For the D2 ion, as you go and split your EG and your T2G stats, this doublet D term splits, but now we get a reversing of the states relative to the D1, where the doublet EG term is lower in energy than the doublet T2G term. As you increase delta T for a tetrahedral compound, those states split, but now the doublet T2 term is lower in energy than the doublet E term. If we look at a DN versus the D10 minus N configuration, you might notice that there's mirroring between the OH versus the TD for these two terms. The ground state terms for an OH D1 is the same as the TD for the D9. Similarly, the TD terms for the D1 is similar to the OH terms for the D9. This holds in general. So what the consequence of this is, is that we can use the tanabe Sanagano diagram for TD symmetry if we look at the D10 minus N tanabe Sagano diagram. So for example, with the D2 species, we would use the D8 tanabe Sagano diagram if we wanted to analyze it in TD symmetry.
we're going to go through and we're going to analyze the electronic absorption spectrum using the Tanabe Sagano diagram for nickel tetrachloride dianion. This is a nickel 2 plus compound, so it is a nickel 3D8 species. This is in TD symmetry, so what we're going to use is we're going to use the D2 Tanabe Sagano diagram because the states and the splittings will mirror that of nickel 2 in tetrahedral symmetry, the 3D8 ion in tetrahedral symmetry. So a few things to point out about this electronic absorption spectrum is that if we look, we see that the extinction coefficients are much larger than what we had observed in OH symmetry. This is because these are now Laporte allowed transitions as opposed to the Laporte forbidden spin allowed transitions observed in OH symmetry. In tetrahedral symmetry, you've lost that inversion center, so these transitions become more allowed. The second thing to point out is that oftentimes for these D to D bands, you'll see some splitting in these owing to spin orbit coupling and other effects. So for this transition here, we're taking the energy as the average of those two peaks that have been split. So we're looking at these three low energy transitions. Later on, we're also going to examine the origin of these weak transitions that we observe in the electronic absorption spectrum. Just as before, we're going to take the ratio of the energies of these various transitions. So here, the second lowest energy transition over the lowest energy transition. Gives us this ratio, which equals 2.11. Here we have a second set of transitions that we can look at. So we're going to look at that third transition over the lowest energy transition, and this gives us 15,455 wave numbers over 3,720 wave numbers, which equals 4.15. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare these to E over B ratios from the D2 Tanabe Sagano diagram. To help guide us to see where we should be looking for our delta over B on the D2 Tanabe Sagano diagram, we're going to remember from crystal field theory that delta T is equal to 4 ninths delta O given the same transition metal and ligands attached to that transition metal ion. Another piece of information that's going to be helpful is that beta in tetrahedral compounds is generally larger than beta in octahedral compounds. Because of this, the delta T over B is going to be approximately 50% of delta O over B. If you remember from a previous video, we used a delta O over B equal to approximately 12. So our starting point is going to be a delta T over B equal to 6. So let's remember nu2 over nu1 was 2.11, and nu3 over nu1 was equal to 4.15. And we're going to use a delta t over b equal to 6 from our d2 Tanabe Sagano diagram. So d10 minus 8 is d2. In tetrahedral symmetry for a D8, we use the D2 Tanabe Sagano diagram. So going through, doing a vertical line at 6, 
going across. There. We're going to look for our E over B's corresponding to those. For the triplet T1 to triplet T2 versus the triplet T1 to triplet A2, we have an E2 over B over E1 over B equal to 9.0 over 4.3, which equals 2.10, which is reasonably close to the value that we're looking for up there. Comparing the triplet T2 originating from that P term, that excited state originating from our ground state relative to the lowest energy transition. We get an E3 over B and an E1 over B. This is equal to 17.9 over 4.3, which equals 4.16, which is also very close to what we calculated before. So we're going to use these values going forward to calculate delta T and B for our nickel tetrachloride anion. Going through, we're going to calculate now our values for B and delta T. So for B, we have a lot of different values that we can use. So starting with our lowest energy transition, we have this and B equals 865 wave numbers. In a lot of treatments, people stop with just the lowest energy value and use this value for B. We're gonna go through and average together all three values. So E2 over B. B equals 872 wave numbers in this case. E3 over B. B equals 863 wave numbers. For an average value of B equal to 867 wave numbers, calculating delta T over B. This equals delta T over 867 wave numbers, which we said equal to six. So delta T is equal to 5,000 200 wave numbers. We can calculate the parameter beta. That's B of the complex over B of the free ion, which is 867 wave numbers divided by 1,080 wave numbers, which is the B value for a free nickel two plus ion, and that equals 0 0.803.
Before, we've been calculating beta values that have been in the range of 50 to 60% of that of the free ion. Here, moving from OH symmetry to tetrahedral symmetry, we get something that's much closer to the free ion value, so 80% of the free ion value. So in this tetrahedral compound, this is a much more ionic complex. We'll explore the reason for this when we get into much more realistic models for bonding than the crystal field model, which we've been introduced to. We can now go through and assign these features in the electronic absorption spectrum. All of these transitions originate from the ground state triplet T1 term. Here, what we have is a transition from our triplet T1 up into the triplet T2 state, originating from the F free ion term. The next energy transition goes into your triplet A2 state. And then this high energy intense transition is the triplet T1 term going into the triplet T2, originating from the P free ion term. In addition, we can also see where these lower intensity features come from. So here, if we go up at 6, we get into a spin-forbidden transition originating from a singlet D term. And then we see another one that originates from a singlet G. So these here are both spin-forbidden transitions, and they're very weak. But when you get into TD compounds, you can start to observe these in the UV vis spectrum for some complexes. So just going through in the OH versus tetrahedral. So before, we looked at a nickel-2 compound in OH symmetry and we found that delta O was on the order of 8,000 wave numbers, and that beta was equal to about 60% of the free ion term. In the delta T compound, we have delta T equal to 5,200 wave numbers, and a B value that's about 80% of the free ion term. So as we predicted from crystal field theory, delta T is much less than delta O. In addition, what we're gonna find is that OH compounds are going to be more covalent than corresponding TD compounds, which are more ionic which is reflected in that beta parameter. In the next series of videos, we're gonna shift gears and start discussing molecular orbital theory.